All right, guys, thanks again for uh, listening to uh, the speech here. I, uh, this is uh, on, uh, it's time to re-regulate the airlines. U.S. airlines have lost uh, money in 23 of 32 years since the regulations in 1978 to almost a total of uh, $70 billion. Uh, my little background, I, uh, I'm working for American Eagle since uh, 2000, and uh, in November of 2011, American Airlines, which is uh, AMR Corporation, went back, which kind of brought us down with them. Even though we were profitable and we made money for American, since we were still owned by them, we, uh, we ended up going bankrupt. Uh, they tried to divest American Eagle twice in the last uh, four years without success. And, and, and the way things are going, eventually it will be divested by our own separate company. But as of now, we're, we went through the bankruptcy process. Uh, the airlines, uh, 24 airlines have gone under since the regulation. And all the legacy carriers that we have now, United, uh, American, Delta, they've gone through the bankruptcy process, at least once, maybe sometimes twice, since the regulation. So there's something wrong there. I mean, uh, the regulation was meant, uh, the Airline Deregulation Act was in 1978. It was put out by Jimmy Carter. It was meant to remove government control of uh, fares, routes, and market entries. It was also meant to attract new airlines into competition, into uh, lower fares, uh, and improve service, which kind of in the last 30 years, it has not. Service has gone down, and uh, the, even fares, fares have gone down, which was, that was successful, but they, uh, it, it went down before deregulation, and with the, uh, the jet age, as the, uh, the uh, efficiency of the aircraft, it would eventually kept going down. Now, what happened now, uh, prior to that, the, uh, for 40 years, it was called the Civil Aeronautics Board. And they assigned routes, uh, set fares, and ensured that the airlines remained profitable. And Jimmy Carter thought that that was, was not right, so that's why he need to regulate the airlines. A lot of, a lot of the leg legacy carriers, uh, TWA, uh, Braniff, uh, Pan Am, had a fight with new competition. Uh, biggest was Southwest. Southwest is only about uh, 30 years old airline. And they competed and lowered, was able to manage to uh, drop the fears and uh, knocked out TWA brand. I mean, other factors can contribute, but that was part of it. Now look at JetBlue, look at uh, Frontier or Spirit. Low cost carriers, part of the regulation. Uh, what happened was everybody tried to uh, try to sell the same seat model. So well, the airlines had to go different routes, right? You couldn't change, you couldn't change the seat models, they had to drop tickets. Now airlines are, drop, are trying to get money somehow. Baggage fees, more, more room for leg coach, uh, more room for leg room for coach. So they're, they're getting the fees some other way. And so they came into the, they, so then they had to do it some other way. They had to come into labor, right? In uh, 1978, uh, labor was 40% of the total cost of the airline. By 2010, it became 25% of the total cost. Fuel, labor, were the two biggest costs of airlines. Pilot pay, let's just talk about pilots. Uh, pilot pay it's, uh, has declined 40% since the regulations. In $2010, in 1977, a pilot averaged about $222,000. Now, a pilot's averaging about $132,000. We're talking major pilots. So the, the price has gone for it, it's declined 40%. Where uh, other uh, other uh, industries have only declined about nine percent since then. Uh, the uh, biggest contributor for the Railway uh, Regulation Act was the Railway Labor Act of 1926. That was put into effect uh, to strike to stop the strikes of uh, labor of the uh, railway industry. A lot of the prior to the Civil War, a lot of the railway they, they just decided to go on strike all the time. So they, they entered the uh, Railway Labor Act in 1926. The airlines were added into 1934. Uh, what happened was the, uh, the law prevented contracts from expiring and to maintain the status quo regardless of uh, any expiration date. So you look at American Airlines. Uh, they went into uh, bankrupt in, uh, in 2009, but they were actually in negotiations since 2006 for a contract. So they were, uh, they were working on a contract for almost six, seven years. And they're still, and the Railway Labor Act was what kept them from actually going out and strike, because they, that was part of the part of the Railway Labor Act. You have to negotiate a contract, and that's uh, put into by the National Mediation Board, which was a three-person panel uh, put in by the president to to look at negotiations between the new unions and the management for new contracts. Uh, any acts by the uh, 
union to disrupt the operation or cause enough economic harm to the employer when met by punitive damage. That's why you don't see uh, everybody just going on strike. You have to really try to get into a, uh, a uh, the MVP has to declare an impasse. You go in 30 days uh, cooling down period, and then you go back into negotiations as we can, and then you can get the self-help. And then where that's where the airlines can go on strike, or you can lock out the management can lock out the employees. But you don't see that. And you're going to try to, and the, and the Railway Labor Act kind of keeps that from happening because they want to drag out negotiations for years and years and years. I mean, uh, United went over three years without any contract, and just negotiations. Uh, what happens, the Railroad Labor Act takes away the union's greatest strength, and that's the ability to take away labor services when the union decides that that's the best interest of the members. You've got to stay in negotiations, even though, hey, the strike will be better for the airlines, or for the, for the employees. Uh, yeah, like I said, the average time of negotiations was three years to a minimal rate. Let's talk about the employee. Who gets hurt the most? Uh, we all know about Chelsea Sully Sullenberg. He landed the... Uh, United on the Hudson River. He went into front of the uh, House Aviation Subcommittee and, and he was told that his pension has been cut 40%. And that doesn't even include his, uh, I'm sorry, his pay has been cut 40%. It doesn't even include his pension, that, which was terminated. Uh, management went into labor in many ways mergers, bankrupts, uh, strike breakers, uh, loss of pensions, outsourcing, which is happening here at our company right now. They're outsourcing flying. Bring into uh, to, to, just to get into labor's uh, labor's uh, wedge, putting the wedge into labor. Who, who's benefiting then? Are the consumer benefit benefiting? Well, yes, they've got lower ticket prices, but services deteriorated in a lot of the major airlines. If you travel late, uh, talk about going to Delta, going to America, things are changing now. But uh, that that the, this deregulation act was a big uh, hurdle. I mean, they had to do executive. Executive pay is they 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 benefited the best. Now the only group has benefited from the regulation as executive compensation has vastly increased in proportion to the ten, their tenure of the executives. So te te technically, who, how, how do we tilt the, the laws back to prior to deregulation? The, uh, the, the the members were better. Management were uh, had to get members to raise the contracts to keep the members happy. But as the thing as deregulation happened. Uh, it went to the management side, and they, they, they drove the wedge to labor. It's going to be tough because we have a, a House of uh, Representatives filled by Republicans, and the senators are, are is the majority of the Democrats. The Senate is the majority of the Democrats. There's probably zero chance to change the railroad air right. The only thing that we can do is pressure Congress to change laws to support consumers and maybe introduce a form of regulation. So in my, uh, my personal opinion is we need a national policy that provides a balance uh, between employees and uh, management and the airlines. And, uh, and I think it, it'd be tough to change, but I think if we, uh, if we, if we pressure our, you know, our Congress to do that, I think it might change. We can put the Congress back to being regular the airlines. That's it. Any, uh, any ideas, any questions, any comments? All right, thanks again, guys. Appreciate your time.